All right, today we are going to switch it up and go away from our Should I Shut Down series, finished that up last week. And we're gonna look at uh, kind of one off today. It'll eventually transition into a few other pieces we wanna do. Um, but just to kind of give you guys an idea about what, how we address athletes in general and some of the ideas and methodologies we, we try to use to help the athlete improve um, and which dominoes we wanna knock over and that sort of thing to help the athlete in each area. So one of the concepts we, we use in that regard is the idea of filling a bucket. Um, and if we look and we just broke, broke these down into four basic buckets of strength conditioning, strength, mobility, power, and speed, and saying, okay, how well does an athlete do one or each of these things? And how can we get them better at all of those things? Because realistically, our job is to help an athlete be better and be the best that they can in each of these areas. That's oversimplifying it, but that's kind of the general idea. So when we look at uh, this, we're gonna talk mainly about high school athletes today. When we look at this, we wanna say, okay, if we fill up one of these buckets or concentrate on filling up one of these buckets, which one will overflow into the other ones the most? So uh, for instance, if we believe that's mobility, we would really work on mobility for the athlete, and that should help affect the strength, the power, and the speed the most out of uh, any of the other ones. And then obviously, um, we'd say, okay, that helped mobility, helped power and strength, for instance, a lot, but did help speed, so now we'll move on and we'll really work on speed. Um, that's the general idea. And then specifically, what we have found, especially with high school athletes, and, and a lot of these guys are untrained, is that filling the strength bucket is usually the one that, that is the lowest, needs the most work, and will then affect the other ones the most. So the analogy we give here is that uh, if you're trying to build a car engine, um, strength is the horsepower. We don't need to worry about the fine tuning or uh, how the transmission works or any of those things when we're trying to build the most powerful or the fastest car uh, until we have the adequate horsepower. So we're gonna start with strength and um, build up that engine, build the horsepower up, and then that should overflow into the other areas. So when we look at mobility, we want strength throughout an entire range of motion or, or active range of motion, not just passive. Passive range of motion, more flexibility. Can I bend over and touch my toes? Can I move in a certain direction? But um, it may be like someone actually stretching you there and not you being able to control the range of motion. So if we're strengthening the right way, that should improve mobility. A lot of times with high school kids as well, the lack of mobility or, or some type of tightness in their body comes from a lack of strength. Your body's first uh, idea or first uh, natural reaction is to survive and not hurt itself. So uh, if kicking out in front of me or raising my hand really fast, uh, if I feel like my shoulder is really weak or there's a blockage there, then I'm not gonna want to do that because I have a great chance of, of injury. So if I, through strength training, can um, improve the musculature around the area and then again, move the area better um, and get it stronger, we should be able to increase mobility. Um, again, general examples here, nothing too specific, but that's the idea. Power is creating um, force on an object as quickly as possible. So. Um, if again back to the engine example if we have a car that has 200 horsepower and then another and they weigh the same and then another car that has 400 horsepower the power that we can implement onto that mass um, as in a, in a shorter period of time will help that move faster so if we're relating that to uh, bench press if I can bench press if I have one guy that can bench press 400 pounds and another guy that can bench press 200 pounds the guy that can bench press 400 pounds could probably like do a chest pass with a med ball, an eight pound med ball further than the guy that can only bench press 200 pounds. So that's where we see the carry over there from the strength to the power. Again, like a, a squatting and vertical jump, it's not a perfect correlation, but you know, someone can squat 400 pounds, they can probably, and they weigh the same amount. Someone that can squat 200 pounds, a guy that can squat 400, usually has a better vertical or better chance of uh, creating more force through their lower body. Uh, when we look at speed, uh, we'll, we'll just kind of talk about like actual foot speed, running speed today when we're talking about speed. Um, again, that takes it to a little bit of a different extreme with some of the fast switch movements and really working uh, on a lighter scale and moving weight faster, and that'll be a video for a different day. Um, but again, if we can move 400 pounds 
or move twice the amount of weight on any of these other lower body exercises, then the ability to produce force into the ground. Um, and if you look at speed as an equation of increasing speed is, is either longer stride length or faster frequency, stride frequency, then our stride length should improve because we're putting more force into the ground. Um, and then we should have the ability to recover faster and increase the frequency as well if we're stronger. Um, so you can see that strength should flow into each one of these. Um, and that way we would be increasing all of them at the same time. Now, could we work that backwards and say start with speed? And if we work with the efficiency of the movement, um, work on sprint tech, and work on just moving lightweight or body weight really fast, would that help your speed and your power? Probably yes. To do plyometrics help your overall strength because you're landing um, and then having to produce more body weight or then move your body weight uh, in another direction, will that produce strength and help you strengthen it? Yes. Um, but I think it's pretty well understood that uh, most people in our field uh, and the general scientific concepts that apply to strength conditioning, being able to generate that strength is, um, the, it will help you make those changes quicker um, and get the results faster. So um, do we integrate all of these things at the same time? To some extent, yes. Again, we will have uh, guys that are starting out with those 15 year olds that have never strength trained before. Maybe 80% of their program is just working on getting stronger but we're also gonna sprinkle in some of the other things throughout um, to help them as well. And we're really working more on just the technique of the speed training here and not worried about top end speed right now. We're teaching them something like sled pushes where they have the weight so they're getting the stimulus of the sprint tech with uh, some weight applied to them, but um, they're not moving as fast as they can. There are some other simple concepts that like being able to hold your positions. Uh, if you watch Olympic sprinters, they are built like brick houses, huge quads, hamstrings, butt, uh, you know, midsections are, are all tree trunks. Um, that is for a reason. They need to hold certain positions and they need to have the strength to do that. We've had people that have had trouble with the speed tech, the sprint technique, because they're simply not strong enough to hold these positions. So they immediately flop into a certain position where they're not able to get full extension because they don't have. Um, the posterior chain strength to do so. So again, just another example of how strength plays into a few of these different areas. Um, if we talk about just mobility as like a flexibility type thing, we can have guys that can come in here and they're moving all over the place and that's great. But if you don't have any type of force behind that, you're basically a house of cards. So we want guys to be able to move better. Um, and um, you know, that's a huge thing that we work on and we look at is just overall movement capacity. But if they don't have the strength, then that's, you know, they're swinging a wet noodle if you're talking about baseball specifically. On the flip side, if we have an athlete that comes in, uh, maybe it's a professional athlete, they've been playing for a few years, it's a grown man, grown woman, um, and they've been training for 10 or 15 years, they may have the strength needed, um, and that is something that's it's very, very high, it's a bucket that's filled, um, then we would look at more of, of these three things to say which one of those needs to be addressed the most? Or is it just a combination of all three? Or which bucket would over, overflow the most? Do they have some type of compensation pattern where we really need to work on the mobility aspect and that'll free them up to be more powerful and be more explosive and move faster? Um, so that's just a kind of like a general overview of how we view athletes and view strength and conditioning and look at it from, again, the idea of filling buckets. Uh, we'll go into more advanced concepts with this, like the um, speed strength continuum and uh, understanding how we look at and, and what makes us determine where an athlete needs to spend their time as far as which bucket they need to fill uh, in the future weeks. But right now we wanted to just address the overall uh, picture and help you guys understand, hey, if this is you and you're maybe writing your own program or you're looking for help, understand which bucket needs to be filled and then transition into your program into actually executing that on a daily basis.